Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Matt Lauren from Boson Protocol, uh, and we're here, like the uh, MC just said, to talk, talk a little bit for 20 minutes or so about NFT marketplaces, where they are right now, and where we see them going in the future. Um, first of all, I think we just do a couple of quick introductions. Uh, so maybe uh, Tyler, you to kick us off. Uh, sure. So my name is Tyler Kell. Um, I am a research engineer at Cornell University, uh, working at the Initiative for Cryptocurrencies and Contracts. We do academic research in the space, um, and so we publish academic papers and uh, try and push forward the, the tech of this uh, wonderful ecosystem. Hello, I'm Raf. I'm VP of Creative Production at Dapper Labs, and I've been uh, with them for four years now, and I have worked on uh, Top Shot and CryptoKitties and some other uh, NFT projects. Hey, and like I say, my name is Matt Law. I'm a Boson Protocol. Boson Protocol is a, a decentralized application on Ethereum, moving on to a Polygon as well, that enables anybody to buy or sell physical products or digital products, phys digital products, if you like, as NFTs. Um, so we're very interested in sort of like the marketplace layer of, uh, uh, of, of, of the NFT scene. Um, and, and, and that as a sort of a, a counterpoint to, or as an addition to the sort of like the marketplace websites that we see today. So big, hopefully a really good conversation and uh, uh, glad you're all with us. So let's start us off with, ah, hey. Alexei is here. Yeah, hello. Alexei, welcome. Everyone. Alexei, introduce yourself. I'm sure many people know you already, but just uh, give us a brief Sure. Intro. Alexei Fallen, CEO and co-founder of Rarible. Nice to see everyone. Great. Uh, so, um, so I guess my first question to, to, to each of us, I suppose, is um, what do you, where do you see NFT marketplaces are at the moment and what are sort of some of the kind of key trends or, or sort of issues sort of coming down the pipe? Maybe, uh, maybe Raf, you want to kick us off? Sure. Uh, so <laughs> NFT marketplaces right now, they are they are very interesting. It's it's w with the current market, like all the all the movement. But I think that they serve uh, some very important purposes in the sense of display. Basically, it feedbacks a lot. There's a lot of need to go to the marketplace to see what's on your wallet, to stock other wallets. There's the discovery aspect where. Where do I learn about the new drops, about the new collections, what's going on? You use the marketplace for that. Uh, I think that sometimes it's uh, uh, underestimated the power that they have in that sense. Um, yeah, th I think that that's the main important point that I'd like to, to throw up now. Awesome. Alexei, obviously you, you get a lot of the sort of insights from running one of the uh, kind of key marketplaces in the space. Um, where do, you, where, do you, where do you see what's happening right now and, and what are kind of some of the main things you guys are talking about in terms of product strategy and product development? Yeah, sure. Um, we're pretty OG in the space. Yeah, we started in 2019, even before the market happened. So um, I would say that um, it's an um, interesting time. So everything is changing every like six months, I would say and the marketplaces is changing. Uh, there is a um, very huge dependence on the supply side. So it depends on like a, almost a year, a year and a half ago, it, there was no PFPs at all, like zero, only CryptoPunks, uh, but they already existed and they traded always, always on their own marketplace. So the, uh, the major asset was uh, crypto art. So it was a whole different set of marketplaces with different UI and UX. Now um, a big portion of supply is PFPs. It forces people to build in a way that you can trade PFPs. It's more like trade oriented and trader tools like statistics, everything. And uh, the whole like NFT tech, it could be used for many, many other things. And uh, there is a lot of experiments going on each month. So. I'm saying that um, yeah, it's a it's a challenge on the supply side. So if it will be different use cases, it will be different marketplaces. But anyway, it feels like we are already far away from the very early, um, I would say, marketplace days. And now we we're seeing like more verticalization trends. So uh, uh, all the um, um, like specialized marketplaces for, let's say, uh, 
digital land marketplaces, music marketplaces, like even uh, trade-oriented marketplaces. I know that like the new one should be launched very soon, very trade-oriented. Trade so yeah, that's um, uh, the whole bunch of different type of marketplaces will emerge. And uh, last month we saw all the almost like all the uh, OG players they launch their protocols, so all the marketplaces they go for APIs and uh, tools for developers to build their own vertical marketplaces or community marketplaces. Rarible has actually launched this uh, protocol solution like almost a year ago, and we have the most robust API now. And we also launched several community marketplaces. This is what we are focused on right now. And I think that like this is a future next like couple years at least. Awesome. Thanks. Tyler, have you got uh, thoughts on where we are right now? Yeah, I mean, the only comment that I would like to make is that I think right now, like in this exact moment, um, with like sort of prices falling and, and emerging NFT bear even maybe, um, I, I think we've seen somewhat of a, a wave of consolidation. I think um, we've seen Uniswap most recently just purchased Genie, OpenSea purchasing Gem. So I think Alexi had mentioned like the growth of tooling in the space and uh, marketplace APIs. I can tell you that as a programmer, someone who has been doing a lot of engineering effort, right? Like marketplace APIs have traditionally been for us a like big point of pain. Um, like the OpenSea being the only one really that provided an API, and they are very protective of their API keys. So it, was, it, it is currently and has been difficult to get quality data as a programmer, um, something that maybe is less of a problem in the Web2 space, let's say. Mm, great. Uh, actually, Raf, you said one thing that I, th I think is a really interesting insight that I just want to build on, which is when we talk about NFT marketplaces, actually, you know, there are a whole bunch of different things that come from, from that, right? I mean, you have, you know, the, the, the original like, concept, I guess, which is enabling buyers and sellers to come together. But there are all these emergent properties that, that these spaces have, you know, essentially around things like uh, uh, display, right? My gallery my ability to sort of represent myself and my identity or even you know the role of kind of curation i guess within a within a sort of like a space that, that exactly that, that. we can think of analogs right we can think of an nft marketplace on one extreme being a trading view you know place with your if you're coming at it from the pure investment side you know what's the liquidity what's the volume what are the price changes and all that uh, and on the completely opposite end, you can think about it as a flea market, right? Where you come in and see, oh, look, this is a cute thing that, you know, someone had in their basement like for years and I want to buy it, right? And, and that's much more like of a personal, you know, expression in a way. But between those extremes, there's so much that we can do. And you mentioned something important that is uh, the buyers and the sellers, right? Markets are uh, essentially social, right? Of course, there's like fast trading and all that when you think about, you know, kind of investment markets. But the market, the, the act of buying and selling and the NFT itself, which is the non-fungibility of it, the uniqueness of each piece, just make it even more social, even more human in a way. So that aspect of the markets is usually like uh, complemented by Twitter, by Discord, by other things. So they don't exist in a, in a, in a bubble, right? They exist like l leaning on these other, these other aspects for discovery, right, especially. Yeah, and I think when you think about that sort of verticalization that you were talking about there, Alexei, one question is like, you know, is it verticalization based on, you know, role of NFT? Or is it also, potentially there could be verticalization around, you know, the, the, the particular role that you have for the user interface or the user experience that you want, right? You know, my gallery doesn't necessarily need to be directly connected to the place where I trade or the place where I get insights or how the data is represented. Yeah, totally. Um, probably we can say about this as a verticalization and specialization. So verticalization pretty much more reference to this special type of NFTs and specialization is more like different use, uh, not use case UX oriented 
uh, or just user-oriented uh, marketplaces. Yeah, but it's happening, and this is normal. <laughs> As more supply and more requests from the market is coming. Yeah, awesome. I mean, um, sort of thinking about kind of what you see the sort of like near-term emerging trends are. I mean, one thing that I, I, I sort of see is that I think there's something that comes from, that you can take from the rhyming of history, right, insofar as initially, you know, new technology tends to be sort of more closed, tends to be sort of curated, you know, walled garden, if you like. If you look at, say, AOL in sort of the year 2000, I think a lot of what you see today with how, you know, we represent, you know, non-fungible items in, in marketplaces is essentially a kind of an AOL type experience and like that that shift over time tends to come into sort of like openness you know through things like APIs through things like you know moving from platform to protocol and stuff like that um, and that's stuff that you, you've been thinking about as well sure uh yeah, I just I got I got off on a train of thought like that. It's you, you talked about AOL, right? It goes back to what Web two brought uh, to you know the economy and 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 human relations, where every receiver, you know, every consumer of content now is potentially a creator of content, and that's how and they all go through YouTube or they go through Instagram or anything like that, and it really revolutionized the way that we create and consume and and interactive content. When you think about the blockchain as a way to do that, but in an order, so if you go through YouTube as a content creator, YouTube is going to be the one who's going to be managing your money, defining how much your value, how much your value is, and cut, getting a cut from your check. Now, with Web3, what you have is that you have the possibility of reaching directly to the cons to the consumer that you touch. So not only a content creator, but you're also a finance object, finance instrument creator. And with the NFTs and the marketplace, that's how you reach them. Um, and yes, I think that in the future, one thing that you mentioned, right, about specialization. I think you are going to see specialization, but we have to remember that it's Web3. These things are free. They run around. So let's say an artist has an exclusive deal with a gallery or like an artist has an exclusive deal with Spotify or YouTube buys Ninja from Twitch. It doesn't really work that way on Web3. So even if you have a specialized marketplace where you go to buy art, you can always do arbitrage on more generic marketplaces. And another thing that Tyler was talking before, right? Like it's, you can have bots doing that, right? You can have trading bots specialized on NFTs, understanding trades, understanding metadata, understand, and, and doing that arbitrage around markets, which I think just creates more liquidity, creates more velocity, and it's just fun. <laughs> so Ty Tyler, you probably got an insight there because I know that you've done a lot of work on, you know, MEV, and you wrote the paper, or helped write the paper around that, but, you know, the idea of sort of, you know, automation in markets and, and stuff. I think you had some good insights earlier. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting because, um, you know, this ecosystem is, is relatively unique for what it is in that sense, right? Like, we don't see that kind of um, bot operation in normal markets generally. Um, you know, like, yes, there exists, like, eBay bidding bots, for example. Um, those things exist, but they're not nearly as prevalent as they are in the in the NFT ecosystem, right? Like, um, we I have not done any measurement studies recently on the number of um, of bot operated trades, but I can tell you from the mint side of things, a lot of the mint traffic that you see of new collections is in fact bot operated, you know, operated by human control, but a, a bot is doing the minting, um, and so that's relatively unique about this ecosystem. Um, I actually, it's one of the things that excites me about this ecosystem. I think that, um, you know, as time marches forward and we get more technologically advanced, like the, the, the sort of difference between a human and a computer is going to blur even more. And so it's, it's kind of interesting to see that play out in this sort of art field, which is like not traditionally usually maybe thought of as technological. But one of the interesting things that I like to bring up about NFTs a lot is that actually like technology drives art, not the other way around. Like you cannot have Led Zeppelin or like Queen or Fred, like Freddie Mercury and all those people without like the invention of the electric guitar. And so like this notion of like tech driving art is, um, is pretty cool. Um, but to dive, to dive back to NFT marketplaces, I, I get artists that come to me and they're like, how do I create an NFT? Like I wanna create my first NFT. And a lot of the, like, I think a lot of the, like, centralizing focus in terms of, like, 
ability to do things is at the marketplace level, right? Like the first place you say is, oh, do an OpenSea shared storefront, right? And so like NFT marketplaces as onboarding agents is, is definitely a thing. Um, and I, I know that you have a lot of experience with that at Dapper. I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, like the top shot, like we did, we did our own marketplace, right? Like there are many specificities on that. And one of the reasons that we stay close because of credit cards, right? So credit cards didn't exist. You could not buy an NFT with, and, and with a credit card. And that initial uh, block to, you know, get a wallet, you know, get get Ethereum, make an account on Coinbase, all that stuff. We had that on CK, right? It was really hard for people to go through all those steps. I know because I did them in 2017. It was fucking pain, sorry, but it was, right? So when the only way to get mass adoption, to increase the number of people, is to lay on affordability, like affordances that they have from, you know, buying stuff from Amazon, buying stuff from, you know, on signing up for Spotify, right? Like, once we can lean on those affordances on that smooth path, then we can actually create even more things. But there's one point that, like, tech, tech pushes art. Like, yeah, that we, 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 we need, uh, like, five more panels, and we can talk about that. Because <laughs> I honestly think that, like, tech actually opens space, opens new space for art and expression. And I think that they really become interesting, exactly as you said, right? The electric guitar was made to be... Uh, a louder re acoustic guitar, and what happened is those guys like Led Zeppelin, actually, and you know the Beatles and all of those, they were creating pedals and creating distortion because now they had sound as an electric wave that they could play with. So they start to push and say, "Hey, what is this thing not supposed to do that I can do with it?" And in a way. It's what NFTs are all about. What is this cryptographic technology that spies were doing, right? What can I do that it's not supposed to do? Let's make JPEGs, right? Yeah, yeah. What can I do with uh, marketplaces that I'm not supposed to do? <laughs> so, so uh, Alexia, I'm interested in your perspective here because obviously, you know, you're at the coalface of enabling, you know, new users, onboarding, and some of that stuff that Raf was talking there must have sort of. I'm interested in the, the rareable perspective on, on, on that and how you kind of bring people on. Yeah, sure. Uh, rareable from like 2019 when we started, uh, we uh, were the, the only place where you can mint NFTs actually uh, initially. And uh, for a very long time, like OpenSea sell, uh, sends all the users to, for mint to rareable. And still, we have one of the best minting experience. And now we support several other blockchains and minting as well. Uh, although minting is also getting more and more complex, and um, uh, I, I think that this is not the job of marketplaces in general to support minting. It's more like have to be done in a very very specialized way, like separately, and then like incorporated into marketplaces. But currently this process somewhere in the very, very early st start, I would say. And uh, yes, a lot of people that uh, Rebel users, they first, this was like their first interaction with crypto. And that's pretty interesting because, uh, yeah, we, we do support all the wallets and uh, we do have some on ramps so you can buy with credit card. Um, yeah, and for maybe like two years ago, one year ago, uh, it was very strong feeling like this uh, very needed uh, ability to purchase with a card and maybe even have a login and password like Flow has. Uh, I'm really curious, like, what's from the Flow perspective, if this changed to this moment. Uh, I'm feeling that uh, the script um, native approach pretty much winning this uh, old school uh, Web2 approach, and people are tend to get used to use MetaMask and Coinbase rather than just going through login and password and topping up the wallet with the credit card. Actually, like I hope Coinbase will solve this problem or someone else will solve this problem. I mean, on ramps. Uh, currently, it's like a mess still. I have to s spend like two hours with KYCs and follow your password and everything. It's really hard. <laughs> Awesome. So I don't know, for Rebel, yeah, we, we did like a year ago even we thought like, yeah, we should do like a login and password and um, 
simplify this, but now it feels like it's okay. Like MetaMask experience is fine. Yeah, what do you think? I don't know. Uh, I, I've been playing with the internet like for 30 years now, and I remember doing IRC, right? Internet Relay Chat, and configuring my MIRC, uh, you know, client on my computer. And, you know, you had to go to the sockets and you had to configure it by hand. Yeah. In order to <laughs> chat with a bunch of people across the world, like about more or less specific subjects. Now I can use my same account on Discord because it logs in through Google on my phone, on my iPad, on my PC at home, on my laptop, and it's the same account. It's seamless. I keep, keep the conversation going on the phone. Mm -hmm. That kind of simplicity, I think that people expect that, and, and I agree. Like, it should be as native as possible. It should be as Web3 and you know, true ownership as possible, but having this, it, it should not be complicated, it should not be hard to use. Okay, guys, we've got, only got a couple of minutes left, and I just want to ask one last question, because I think uh, sort of like ending on a more visionary note would be quite interesting. So um, I'm interested in all your perspectives in a, in a little espresso shot of where you think uh, marketplaces are going next and what's the sort of like the next coming down the horizon. And I'll start us off. I think one in interesting area that Alexei touched on sort of tangentially is NFTs are essentially, at the moment, principally about visual expression, either through PFPs or through, you know, uh, you know, digital art. Uh, and what we're seeing, I think, coming down, coming down the track in terms of innovation, is a lot more different types of functional NFTs, right? You know, things like NFTs as access tokens, NFTs as social, NFTs as representation of community, or you know, what we're working on at Boson around. NFTs that represent, you know, physical items, and I think that's a real challenge for how marketplaces need to evolve. And you know, whether that's a sort of like a, a fragmentation, a verticalization, or something else, I think that's a, a big sort of, you know, next two or three year trend that we need to sort of look at. Um, Tyler, do you want to sort of jump in next? Sure. Um, so I'm going to throw something from left field and, and, and mention a topic no one has mentioned thus far, which is DeFi. Um, I think the merging of NFTs and DeFi is a really hot topic in certain segments of the industry right now. Um, you know, new kinds of marketplaces. You've heard about like automated market market makers, these kinds of topics. So I think we're going to see some of the like DeFi Swiss Army knife building blocks happen. I think this ban is too short. Uh, the whole thing about uh, I think utility is a big point. Digital utility is going to have to be displayed on the marketplaces, N not not only the different kind of JPEGs we have today, but also that utility. So it means basically like if I have a market and I'm selling frozen goods, now I need a fridge because up to this point we don't need fridges to store them and to display them properly, right? So I think that that's going to be the next step, and also multi-chain. I think that multi-chain is is how it's going to be in the near future. Yeah, I would agree with previous uh, <laughs> topics, uh, points, yet yeah, definitely uh, utility, inter interoperability, and multi-chain is the key of things that will grow next like few years, like in a very broad um, direction, it will be like, yeah, um, those things. Awesome. Well, that was a blast. It went all too quickly. Thanks very much, everyone, for being here, and thanks to the panel for your great contributions. Thank you. Thanks, guys.